my buddy Rich. Hello. Uh, trapped a beaver the other day, we gutted it, skinned it, and today we're going to make stew. First thing first, we're just going to break it down, take some of the fat off. We only need four pounds for this uh, recipe. 47 pounds this thing weighed originally. It's a female. Uh, all the castor glands are removed, all of it. So all we're left is with is the bones, the meat, and the fat. So, we're going to need a fillet knife, and we're going to start with the legs. And we're just going to take the legs off. Pretty much the same thing as a chicken. If you can do a chicken, you can do a beaver. Nice dark meat. Don't be afraid to muscle for it either. Sometimes you gotta do that. So we got one leg off. Right, the other side, this one's bone. If you ever don't know where the bones are in an animal, just go on the internet and look up the anatomy of an animal. Okay. We'll take off the hind legs here. These guys are a little beefier. The other ones. Pick up some of this fat first. Have a container for both the meat and for all your trimmings, like the fat, the bones, and all that. Also keep the bones so you can make a game stock. Saddle of the of the beaver. So that nice little bit of meat. Really should have a bone saw to do this. I don't have. So we're just gonna for now keep these whole and we're gonna come back and do ribs another day. So for this recipe, we're doing a beaver stew, I said. So, uh, so we're gonna use these little skirt pieces. And some of the legs as well. We'll start with the skirt. We're gonna wanna take off as much fat as possible. We don't want very oily stew. We want a nice, thick, hearty stew. Take off as much. Silver skinning. 
can. Silvery white stuff underneath, that's called silver skin. Get up there. So, have a scale because we want four pounds of this. Have a container, calibrate your scale, bring it to zero, or tear it if you have a digital one. And then we're just going to chop these up into nice sized pieces without gaping. Pop them in there and wait till you get to four pounds. One pound. In. Grab another piece. Start cutting some of those bigger chunks off. That's the easiest to do. Now, do the same thing until you get four pounds vegetables we're going to need for this stew, so I'll just go over that in a moment. So, I'm just going to go over everything you need for this recipe, but first, once you have all your meat cut, your four pounds, in this case four pounds, one ounce, uh, you're going to make a brine, which a brine is just a salty solution of water, salt, and sometimes other flavorings. This is four cups of water, two teaspoons of salt, 
and two teaspoons of regular distilled white vinegar. And you're just gonna pour that over your meat. This will help tenderize the meat and also pull out any of the game, try to start pulling out any gamey flavor if it has any. Uh, and you're just gonna let that soak for about an hour, 30 minutes to an hour. We're gonna need six ounces of canola oil, or similar oil, peanut oil, uh, grapeseed oil, would work fine. Don't use olive oil, it burns too quickly. Uh, you're gonna need eight ounces of lardons. Lardons are uh, bacon, kind of like matchstick sizes. You're gonna need 12 ounces of large diced carrots. 12 ounces of large diced celery. Uh, eight ounces of chopped large diced onion. You're gonna need six ounces of uh, Mushrooms, you can use any mushrooms, wild mushrooms, button mushrooms, portobello mushrooms, whatever you like, to your preference. You're going to need 8 ounces of chopped tomatoes. You can also just use 8 ounces of canned tomatoes if you want. If you have fresh, why not use fresh? You need 1 ounce of Italian herb seasoning, or any herbs you like. Uh, half a teaspoon of salt, and 1 teaspoon of uh, pepper inside of the seasoning. Flour just as much as you need. That's to bread the uh, uh, meat later on. And two cups of beef or game stock. All right, so after an hour, this is sat. You're just gonna pour out the brine. We're gonna reserve it, we're gonna use it later. Oh. See the color change? A lot of the blood and juices came out. All right, once it's drained, you're gonna pat it dry. So take a towel, lay your meat out onto it. You wanna pat this dry because we're gonna flour it. And the flour that goes on the meat is gonna help the meat brown and also thicken the sauce as it cooks. Black is kinda of like a roux almost. Once they're patted dry, you're just gonna stick them into a Ziploc bag. All right, and then you just take your flour, put, pop that in there, seal your bag up. You can also do this in a bowl, but the bag's easier. Shake it. Like so. And it should coat every inch of the meat inside. Alright, so get a pan on or a Dutch oven or casserole, anything you can, anything you want to cook it in. You're gonna put in the six ounces of oil. Have your flame on pretty high because you want this to be smoking hot. And the first thing you're gonna do is add your meat to it. Hot enough, start putting your meat in. Yeah. These won't take long. You don't want to cook them all the way through. And don't overcrowd your pan because I'll start making the uh, pan way too cold. And it'll start boiling the meat. You're just gonna get them brown on one side, flip them, pull them out. You're not trying to cook the meat at all, you're just trying to get color to it. You're just gonna start transforming it into another different pan, taking it out and letting it rest. Helps you have a pan that lays flat, that's always helpful. <laughs> in the meantime, seeing as we only have a few pieces left, we can add in our lardons. And you're just going to cook them until they're just crispy. And all you're doing is releasing fat 
and give it more flavor. Take one out. Give it a stir every once in a while. And you're still doing all this over decently high heat. It's just about where I want it. Flavors come out. They're starting to get crispy. I'm gonna start adding all of our vegetables. So our carrots, celery, onions. And we're just gonna cut these off until they're starting to turn soft. At the same time, you're also gonna add your mushrooms. We're just going to let them soak up that bacon flavor because all mushrooms really are just sponges. They're pretty much just water and once the water comes out, they'll absorb anything that we flavor them with. You see that bacon is starting to turn crisp up nice. And the only reason we're softening these is to impart more flavor into it. If you just threw in them raw and then poured the liquid on, put the meat in and put it in the oven to cook, you're not going to get as good a flavor as you would as if you did this. Because all the flavor from that uh, meat is all in this pan, and now it's all going to be inside this, all inside these vegetables. But you don't need to stir them a lot. If you start stirring a pan too much, you lose heat. And the more you lose heat, the more chances are you're going to have boiled vegetables instead of sauteed vegetables. So once your vegetables are all soft and start, are starting to get soft and sweat, your bacon's nice and crisp, we're going to add the rest of your ingredients. So add your tomatoes. Give that a quick stir. Add your meat back in and any liquid that came off of them. That's all just flavor. Give that a quick stir. And then you're going to start adding your liquids. Add your uh, beef stock or game stock. Your reserved liquid from your brine. And then your seasonings. And give that a stir. Now you may think when I said a, teaspoon, a half a teaspoon of salt, that's not a lot of salt. But don't forget, you also have two teaspoons in your brining solution. So you have three and a half teaspoons of salt. That's quite a lot of salt. So I wouldn't add any more until you taste it once it's finished cooking. As you can see, it's already starting to pick it up. Are you cooking paper right here? I'm filming right now. And I'm talking? Yeah. Perfect. Yeah, it's starting to get thick, so turn it off. And we're just going to cover it and stick it in the oven for about 30 minutes. Alright, right, once it's covered, you're gonna stick it in your 350 degree oven for 30 minutes. Alright, so once it's all done, it'll look about like this, kind of like a beef stew. Uh, the meat should be tender, kind of falling apart. Uh, so, yeah, I'll show you how to plate it up and finish it. I'm gonna do it family style instead of individual dishes, so you just need a serving dish, some parsley. Uh, some potatoes, you can use mashed potatoes, rice, whole potatoes, doesn't really matter. Uh, if you're using whole potatoes, just set some in the corner. Like so. And then just spoon on the stew. And then we're just going to take 
take some of this parsley, roll it up like a cigar, and you're just going to chop through it once. That way you don't bruise the parsley at all. And a good way to check is to just move it aside. If you have a lot of green on your board, it means you dull, your knife's not sharp enough or you overworked the herbs and a lot of the flavor went into the board. And then just sprinkle it on all over. And voila, that is the beaver stew. I sincerely hope you enjoyed this episode of Cooking with the Chef and the Bee. Uh, be sure to like, share, and subscribe to this video and the channel. Uh, be sure to click on uh, the notification bell so you get updates on our future episodes. And uh, I'll see you next time. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.